被裁员了，在快要过年之前。二零二二年最后一个工作日，我被通知下岗了。年底被公司裁员，我是真的懵了。负责人给的理由呢是暂时不需要这个岗位了。朋友们，我被裁员了。三年前的今天，我辞掉国企稳定工三年后的今天，我被裁员了。我今年已经三十一岁了，每个月有固定的七千房贷，两千房租。居家办公，你被降薪了吗？老板发通知，告知所有员工阳了之后居家办公，工资减半。负债碰上降薪，接下来的生活该怎么继续下去 ？Twenty twenty two was a year full of anxiety, pain, and absurdity for many Chinese people. They went from a year of home confinement and daily nucleic acid tests to experiencing a sudden reopening, massive outbreak with lack of medical care, and the pain of losing loved ones. Not only that, but they have also lost their jobs, suffered pay cuts, and company closures. Recently, a new wave of layoffs have swept through mainland China. Many young people are posting videos of themselves being laid off or having their salaries reduced on the internet. They include employees of technology companies such as Tencent, Xiaomi, and Meituan, employees of real estate companies, and employees of state-owned enterprises and civil servants known for their job security. Those who are lucky enough to not be laid off yet. Have to endure the constant fear that they may be laid off at any time, and also face a pay cut. The percentage of pay cut is at least ten percent, some even up to fifty percent. On the last working day of 2022, TikTok's parent company ByteDance released information on the overall scale of layoffs, which is about ten percent. Previously, there were news of Xiaomi starting a wave of layoffs at the end of the year. With individual departments laying off up to 75% of their staff, it is estimated that the overall layoffs may reach 15%, with about 6,000 people. At the end of 2022, Tencent, Bilibili, Zhihu all came out with news of layoffs. Layoffs are nothing new to internet companies, which have been laying off employees since the fourth quarter of 2021. In 2022, the layoffs have not changed, but rather have worsened, according to a document called "List of Companies Laying Off Employees in 2022." From January to December of 2022, companies such as Kuaishou, Baidu, Didi, Tencent, Jingdong, Ali, Aichi, Zhihu, ByteDance, and Xiaomi have all laid off employees. Technology companies have been dominant for the past decade or so. They offer good jobs and high salaries, attracting many young people to join. These young people with high income then began to plan their life: buy a house, buy a car, get married, and have children. With the exception of the few individuals from privileged families, most people, even if they are paid well, still need to be meticulous in their budgeting. They need to take into account the down payment and monthly mortgage required for a house, as well as daily expenses of the family. They're essentially living paycheck to paycheck. Each month's salary have very necessary uses, and not much goes into saving. Behind the apparent high pay is a very weak risk tolerance. When faced with massive layoffs, these people lose not only their jobs but also the money necessary to maintain their daily living expenses and monthly mortgage payments. Recently, the most discussed topic on the internet, besides layoffs and job hunting, is the mortgage break. According to incomplete statistics, the proportion of accumulated layoffs of internet giants in the past year is as high as 30 percent, while the proportion for real estate companies is even higher. As for the education industry, some companies have laid off as much as 70 percent of their staff. With the continued downturn of China's housing market, the number of unemployed people in the real estate industry has greatly increased. Some people were laid off in 2021, were looking for jobs throughout 2022, and is still unemployed now. A recent report released by a think tank shows that compared to 2019. There are 400,000 fewer property developments and 6 million fewer jobs in related industries in the past three years. The worst of all is the education industry, which has been nearly decimated by the Communist Party's policy of reducing student burden and promoting out-of-school training. 
According to one source, 700,000 training institutions have been reorganized or shut down since 2021. Tens of millions of workers have lost their jobs or changed careers. The CCP's brutal three-year zeroing policy has wiped out China's economy and emptied the government's finances. In contrast to the layoffs in private enterprises, civil servants and employees of state-owned enterprises, known as the Iron Rice Bowl, are facing pay cuts and unpaid wages. Recently, someone tweeted that police officers in Suihua, Heilongjiang Province, had not been paid for 16 months. The unpaid police officers were all admitted to the civil service establishment in September 2021. They were hit by the epidemic right after they joined the force, and had to work hard every day with transferring the infected, manning isolated hotels and sealing off areas. Sometimes they couldn't go home for a week or even a month. They originally thought a stable income would be guaranteed once joining the civil service, but who knew that after 16 months? They would not be paid a single penny. A friend in China works for a state-owned insurance company. Recently, he just received his October 2022 salary and doesn't know when he will get his November and December salaries. Some of his colleagues who receive sales commissions have been owed wages for several years. Recently, a number of bus drivers in Qingfeng County, Puyang City of Henan Province. Appeared on the internet with banners hung all over the bus and demanded for their wages. The video shows that many buses are hung with banners that say, "16 months of bus driving without pay. Give me my hard-earned money." A public transportation company in Pingdingshan City, Henan Province, has previously been involved in a collective wage dispute over unpaid wages for bus drivers and logistics staff. A bus driver claimed that the bus company had owed the driver eight months' worth of wages and the logistical staff more than a year's wages, and that social security had only been paid until 2017, making life very difficult for everyone. Also, collectively claiming wages were the nucleic acid testing samplers during the outbreak. During the large-scale nucleic acid testing in China, this position requires only two to three days of online training. And a theoretical exam to get started, the monthly salary can range from ten thousand to twelve thousand yuan, and even one thousand yuan per day while working overtime. Such a high income occupation garnered a lot of favor from young people. However, with the sudden change of official policy in China, nucleic acid testing was withdrawn from the market, and these once high earning workers fell from the clouds and not only lost their jobs. But also were owed several month wages. There is also the problem of wage claims by migrant workers. Although this issue has been brought up by Chinese premiers every year near the Chinese New Year and has received media attention, it still continues on every year. This year, due to the impact of the epidemic, many industries are in recession, and the problem of unpaid wages is even more severe. According to Radio Free Asia. It is more common for older migrant workers who work in urban construction sites to experience unpaid wages than for younger workers who enter factories. The year 2022 was particularly difficult for these workers. Since the beginning of the year, not only have they lost their source of income, but also a place to live. Some lived under bridges, some in bathrooms, and some in telephone booths. Not only did they not get paid for their work. But they were also infected with COVID-19, and even more annoyingly, were required to isolate at their own expense. Rural workers in factories are also having a hard time. They either encounter a pause in production and get an early vacation, or the enterprise closes down and they get permanently dismissed. Recently, a shocking enterprise holiday notice appeared on the internet. This is an enterprise located in Guangzhou. The notice shows that from December 1st, 2022, the employees will be given a New Year's holiday all the way until February 21st, 2024, a total of 450 days. The notice also said that the October salary will be paid on the day of the holiday, but not the November salary, and that each person will be given a red envelope, which is typically 300 yuan. But because this holiday will include two New Years. 
each person will be paid 600 yuan. According to media statistics, as of now, almost 60% of enterprises in Guangdong, Zhejiang, Shandong, and other regions may shut down for vacation, among which textile, printing, coating, chemical, and electronic industries are affected the most. Data shows that, in previous years, the average work resumption rate of the textile industry in Jiangsu and Zhejiang in December was about 78% and 67%, while this year it was 55% and 48%, and likely to fall even further after the holiday shutdown in January. On December 31st, Chinese officials announced that the PMI, or Purchasing Managers Index, which is a key manufacturing sector indicator, fell from 48% in November to 47% in December. 50% is the cutoff point for economic strength, with below 50% indicating contraction and above 50% indicating expansion. A contraction in the manufacturing sector will not only lead to continued unemployment, but also to a large number of private sector closures. As we have mentioned in previous videos, many foreign trade enterprises are forced to stop production or even close down due to the lack of orders. Many small owners in the manufacturing industry are speaking about their hardships. Due to the cancellation of orders, a large amount of goods and raw materials are piling up. Their biggest hope now is for the business to survive. The most unlucky of all are the depositors of Henan Village Bank. After a nine months long fight and still unable to withdraw their deposits, a large number of depositors headed to Zhengzhou to fight their case again on the first day of 2023. Because of surveillance everywhere, they first dispersed to the border of Zhengzhou city and then went on foot. A video shows groups of depositors walking on the highway in the cold wind, some holding red flags, some holding A4 paper, and some with the word injustice written on them. They shouted, return my deposit, to protest for their rights. However, some sources say that all these people went missing after 10 a.m. on the 1st. On New Year's Eve, the last day of the eventful year 2022, people in Henan, Wuhan, and Nanjing took to the streets, disregarding the authorities and setting off fireworks amidst police blockade to vent their frustrations. In a thought-provoking scene in Nanjing's Xinjiekou Square, a large number of people broke through a police blockade and gathered next to a statue of Sun Yat-sun, the father of the nation, to lay flowers and then release balloons, reminding the world of the previous white paper revolution in China. It is said that at the time, tens of thousands of people flooded the square and swallowed up the police, with a hidden meaning that Chinese people need freedom and democracy. Xu Zhangrun, a professor at Tsinghua University Law School who was arrested by the authorities for calling for institutional reform, wrote an article titled, The Angry People Are No Longer Fearful. The article denounced the Chinese Communist regime as an institutionally incompetent system, which has led to more man-made disasters than natural ones. He believes that the furious citizens are no longer afraid, the countdown to the CCP's downfall has begun. Due to the continued economic downturn, China will probably see more unemployment, pay cuts, and more people taking to the streets to protest the tyranny of the CCP in various ways. Once the people gradually overcome their fear of the authorities through this form of resistance, it will be the dictator's turn to be afraid. Perhaps in 2023, the CCP will fall amidst the protests and the Chinese people will gain true freedom and democracy.